when you tried to kiss her, but she was gay and liked your sister. <laughs> good old American names like Dave or Jim, you know? Hi, I'm Dave. I'm Jim. And this is Dave and Jim Review. We're gonna be doing the new Dance Kevin Dance album, Afterburner. This okay. is a reaction slash review. We're gonna be listening through each track on the album, giving our thoughts. Both of us have been fans of Dance Kevin Dance in the past, so this is a honest perspective of, uh, people who have liked the band in the past. Now, I don't think either of us were really the biggest fans of their last few releases, but the singles from this album that I heard so far were interesting, so we're gonna check it out. What singles did you hear already? This one, Prisoner, was a single, right? Was it? Isn't this the Multiple Stab Wounds? No, I think that's Three Wishes. I don't remember the names. I just remember Multiple Stab Wounds. Track one, Prisoner. Okay. What? Billy backs abortion and eye cream, smokes a pack of Christian bail, and fucks on an island. I feel like that's all pretty straightforward. Yeah, so this first song was a bit underwhelming for an opening track. They didn't really, like, hit you that hard with anything. Like, this is a kind of more laid-back, slow song that I feel like should have maybe been later in the album. Like, usually Dance Gavin Dance at least does the opening album the song, right? Compared to like... Like, what? Ch isn't Chucky the opening of Mothership? Yeah, Chucky. That song's great. We Own the Night, Alex English. Like, almost every first song... Uh, what, what was the first song on Acceptance Speech? Jesus H. Macy? Yeah. Like, they usually Dream always... Image. So I guess, like, yeah, they're trying something new with, like, the opening song, but, like... I didn't think it was impactful. Maybe this is going to be a chill album, dude. That's what they're trying to tell us. Um, Lyrics lie, dude. <laughs> Lyrics lie. I thought it was pretty good at the beginning, but then it just yeah. kind of got, got stale towards the end. I, I think overall this song hits you really hard. I think it's got a little bit of a more fun and, like, old Dance Gavin Dance aspect to it. I thought more the back rhythmic. and forth part was cool. Yeah, the lyrics like, in this one are definitely better than the song before. And it actually seems like Tillian and John at least wrote some of their lyrics together or one of them wrote a part and they actually both do it, which like a lot of times you don't see in Dance Gavin Dance songs. Usually they're kind of writing independently and not so much together. Chorus and the post-chorus part where John and Tillian are going back and forth are the highlights of this song. Uh, I'm wondering what, what these lyrics are about. Tillian in this song seems like he's being someone and being snarky, which I feel like he does in a lot of songs. Like, the verses are him, like, talking about how he's done a lot of things and let it get to his head. Oh, my God. He's going to be singing in Spanish. All right. <clears throat> how do you even say this one? Calentamiento. Yes, Dave's very I failed cultural. <laughs> I only took Calentamiento I, Global. I think it took two years. But yeah, okay. Let's check it out. <laughs> All right, that was, that song was a lot to take in. So I guess this song was uh, Dance Gavin Dance's take on. Uh, a Latino inspired song. Dude, I don't like, know what the fuck it uh, was. Um, so basically, the premise of this song is Dance Gavin Dance has like some like Latina type post hardcore instrumentals going on, and Tillian is singing in Spanish the whole time, and uh, we're on Genius here, and so every line has the English translation. Starts off, you know, pretty regular Tillian-esque. What's the hook that he starts off with that he's saying? I adore you, my queen. You're the only one I want. I see. I adore you, my queen. You're the only one I love. Like, kind of typical, you know, Tillian sweet-talking sexy lyrics. But 
as the song goes on, it only gets cringier. You, this is just not good. Okay, so the, the pre-chorus line is, Your hips cure the disease, your butt brings world peace. The way you move solves global warming? <laughs> All while... John Mess's lyrics do, again, like, going back to what I was saying earlier and how the lyrics don't really add up, like, really don't, like, go together at all. But tell me the line, emblem emblazed above the head, I'm your avatar, isn't best line of the year. I don't know what that means. You know how, like, the last airbender has a little, like, arrow on his uh, head? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's cool. He's her avatar. Dude. But the line before that is, history repeats itself, I guess I smelt what I dealt. All while, <laughs> if I could bottle up your your rhythm, it would it would solve everything in the world. Again, the best part of the song is probably the ending, like breakdown when it breaks away from being like Latina Latino inspired, um, and switches to like post hardcore style. Like, I thought breakdown. the instrumental was sick. The instrumental but was. I don't okay. care to hear Tillian singing really bad I, lines. I in will Spanish. say. I don't think Tillian's singing in Spanish was bad. I don't know if he must speak Spanish because... It sounded fine. Yeah, him speak... If, honestly, if I didn't know the English lyrics, this song would have been a lot better. But sometimes Dance Gavin Dance just comes at you with, like, a little too, little too much cringe. The kids so, yeah. love it. I'm talking to you, Swan Posting. All right, we're going to get in the next one. Three Wishes. Three Wishes. Heard this one in the past. This is the, uh... Is this the multiple, multiple stab, stab wounds? I'm so ready! Go. Multiple, multiple stab wounds! Alright. Uh, that's the... I mean... That is the most catchy line so far. Yeah. Multiple stab wounds. I'd say that's what I want from a Dance Gavin Dance song. Like, okay, the lyrics in this song, like, I won't say they're amazing or anything, and John and Tillian's parts, again, don't really add up together, but the song is catchy enough that it doesn't matter, and I feel like that's what I loved about, like, Instant Gratification. Most of the songs on that album are the same way, but... They just, like, hit you with catchy enough parts that it's fun and overcomes that. I don't mind when John is being nonsensical. Like, that's kind of their thing. Like, I think the multiple stab wounds line is this. The first time you hear it, you think it's so kind of over the top. And that's what's fun about listening to a Dance Gavin Dance song is what John Mess is going to be screaming about, whether it's Pico de Gallo, Girl <laughs> Scout cookies, um, you know, whatever else. Stab Jerking wounds. off. Whatever. Yeah, so... Classic John. This was like a classic DGD with Tillian song. Yeah, definitely. That, it, But it was fun, and it's a good one. This, this is probably the best song in the album so far. Agreed. All right. What's the next song? Track five. One in a million. I think this is an Uncle Adam's cover. I hope so. You didn't like that one? I wasn't feeling it. What? I... Dude, I got... D Tillian, he's either saying shit that sounds stupid, or he's saying shit that gets the point across just enough. Like, he sounds like yeah. a third grader writing, or T well, an idiot. See, that's, no why, that's why I said the last song was good, because, like... His writing is obviously not why you listen to a Dance Gavin Dance song. It's his melodies and stuff. And I, I liked how the last song didn't have a lot of lyrics. The, the chorus of Three Wishes is literally just him singing O, oh, which is, like, honestly what Tillian should be doing. Like, he shouldn't be saying words. Like, <laughs> uh, I will say I thought the chorus of this one was fun and especially the way they changed it up and came in with that lead guitar like halfway through or whenever they go to the post course or whatever like that lead guitar is sick the part that guitar part's cool but the lyrics over it were fucking annoying the shit out of me um also this song is probably the first song that has a line that i can say i actually like which was this all my anxious fear it's not that i'm gone i was never here i think that line's cool and it was john mess Lackluster for me. Whatever. Track six, parody catharsis. Parody? 
Prosperity Catharsis. What do you think, Dave? Probably my favorite so far. Favorite? I thought Minus this... Will's part. Just... I thought this one was cool. Cringy. Yeah, the album's on a good stride at this point. The song was okay, I wouldn't I say. I like John's part a lot. Yeah, uh, John's parts in this song were awesome. His lyrics were, like, genuinely good, you know, kind of going between being somewhat funny but actually having somewhat cool... Like, John has always had lines where it's like, you can't tell if he's being genuinely introspective or just writing nonsense, but that's kind of what's cool about it because you can interpret your own meeting. His line about, um, if art has to feel like this, do I parody catharsis? That's, that's a cool, like, sounding line and makes you think about whether that means anything. I'm a fetus. I'm a baby boy. <laughs> I'm just a baby tiny baby boy <laughs> um i also i like this one because john does the verses and like they usually kind of fall into this thing where like tillian does all the verses john does like a pre-chorus and then tillian does the chorus and maybe they do like a post-chorus together but usually it's singing on the verses and choruses and i like how the verse of this one is john instead of tillian i feel like they they've fallen into too much of a structure, structured dynamic in the last few albums, and that's kind of what ruined them for me, why I don't listen to them as much anymore. But songs like this are the songs I'll pick out of their albums and actually put in a playlist and listen to every once in a while. Facts. All right, number seven. We continue... We continue in, to delve into the story of strawberries. And strawberry died... Now it's Strawberry's Wake. Yeah, this is the first sentence in gratification. Although what I've learned about all their story songs doesn't seem like they really have anything to do with each other. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. They, yeah. they probably just... Was like, yeah, let's call this one Strawberry's Wake. Strawberry. Wake. Something I realized about a lot of these songs is I feel like I'm just waiting for John Mess's parts to come. Yes. As much as, like, Tillian does have great hooks sometimes, like, John Mess's parts are usually the catchiest parts of the song. I just, like, almost don't care about what Tillian's doing. <laughs> I mean, the outro is cool. The backstabber's part's the best part of the song. This is just a DGD song. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to... And, Nothing something I think something I realized about halfway through this song and like I've kind of realized before is that I think Dance Gavin Dance has become a victim of their own songwriting. Dance Gavin Dance's instrumentals are usually so consistent and like good that they're underwhelming at this point. You know what I mean? Like like okay, everything that they're doing is like awesome, but like it's such a barrage every song you're it's like you you're, know what's gonna happen yeah you're hit by these like big jazzy chords in parts and these ridiculous like fast tappy guitar leads and it's like they're awesome but they're just constantly that's your it's what you're always hit with so you're expecting it to happen and it's like honestly if they could do less and then do more you'd be hit more that's why like Whenever they have a breakdown or something, it hits really hard because they don't do that in every song. But the fact, like, ever since Instant Gratification, that was the first album they kind of went to this style with Tillian and never went back. Acceptance Speech was almost more like Downtown Battle Mountain 2 instrumental style Dance Gavin Dance or a bit of a transition. Once they did Instant Gratification, they found their style. Sometimes it feels like they're so stuck in this that... It really lacks real emotion put into the writing. I feel like you could put half of these songs on Mothership or Artificial Selection. Yeah. And you wouldn't even notice. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, whenever there's a song that does have, like, real inspiration behind it, I feel like you can really feel it. Like, uh, I, I'm not really faulting Will Swan. He is an amazing writer and guitarist. But this is, like, a hundred plus Dance Gavin Dance songs that Will Swan has wrote. You can only write so many things different ways, so I get it, but they're definitely, like, writing this specific way, and I don't know if I love it, um, and that's why a lot of these albums I don't really replay a lot. Okay, so we're about to do Born to Fail, and 
I heard this is the heaviest song in the album, and I listened to it on my like laptop earlier, so I did enjoy it. Um, I have not heard it. Usually, whenever they're doing something different, it's good, so I think this song's probably going to be my favorite off the album. Born to Fail. <clears throat> Born to Fail. Born to Fail. By Dance Gavin Dance, off of the album Afterburner. Critically acclaimed. Produced. After we're done. Produced by Chris Crummett, the god. Chris, I think it's actually Chris Crume. I'm like 99% sure it's Chris Crume. We're going to go with Krumer. Okay. There's no R. Chris Creamy. All right. This song was pretty good. Chorus was really good. If it's about Tides of Man, though... Tillian's doing a low blow because they don't have a vocalist, so they can't even respond. Like, <laughs> so, way to go, Tillian. And then, yeah, just pull a fucking scam. MacBook? Johnny Craig? Who knows? Like I said, whenever they're doing something different, it's cool. And the song was a bit different. The fact this song is kind of in a different key than they normally play, and it's a little bit darker. Um, Tillian, in his verses is doing this like uh, I could tell you noticed it as soon as he hit that like one note yeah. where he, it doesn't go Tillian's melodies are kind of predictable not that they're bad but like in this song he just hits these notes that you don't expect him to hit because it's in this like weirder melody um weirder key or whatever um so yeah I think overall this forces it to be a more interesting song uh and definitely one of the better songs in the album and uh Lyrics are very, you know, mean. Uh, definitely dissing on some people. I think some of John's lyrics might be about Johnny, but I don't know if that makes sense. They seem like they're still cool, which, like, I wouldn't be mad if they hated Johnny because, like, dude's trash, but, you know, who knows? Probably just doing it for clout. First lyric is only bangers from now on. We're going to go on with the rest of the album and see if that's true. Parallels. Okay. Sounds like a gent song. Parallels. That song... See, okay, the last, like, few songs now have been, like, a little bit different. I feel like if they would have split them up and just not made it, like, same song after same song in the first half of the album and broke it up with these songs that are different, this would have flowed a lot better, like... Honestly, if I was listening to this album alone and I listened to the first six songs, I might Probably have turned have it off. Probably would have already turned it off. Yeah, like, the last half of this album is a lot more promising. I would have been like, yeah, I've heard it all. Yeah, uh, this song was cool, though. Um, lyrics are, like, f funny. The I thought how the chorus, like, was John, again, was cool. I love when they, like, are doing a different kind of, like, pattern of things. And the first chorus was a big switch up from the verse, tempo change, and like time signature change. It really, really switched it up and th like actually threw you on your head. And also the ending. Outro's fire. Yeah, the ending was the first part on the album, I think, where we got an actual breath, like that wasn't a really soft part. Sometimes, you know, they have these little like soft guitar bridges in between like. Tillian's vocals and whatnot, but this is the first like actual full instrumental break where we don't hear anyone doing vocals for like five seconds, and that was really cool. So, yeah, good song. Pretty good. No. The uh, I forgot about the intro where they said "boss" all at once. Oh yeah, the the, the weird vocal thing. Boss. The, the I'm scared. That yeah, was weird. Yeah. Next song is called Night Sway. Next song is called Night Sway. This next song, Sway. Hey. Sway. Night. In the night. Sway. <laughs> In, the, In night. the morning. In the night. I enjoyed this album. Um, the last half especially, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Right. Hey. So Night Sway. Night Sway. Let me just say... Oh, is he spitting? Night Sway. All right. Let me just I wanna, say. I want to point out a few things here. Prison three times already. Dude, there it's was a concept record. There was record. a song called Prisoner, and then on two separate songs he said the word prison, one it's... of them being this song. Second, 
All of Tillian's parts were boring as hell. I was waiting for John the it's whole a, goddamn time. It's a time. concept record about Tillian's parts not being good. And I want to say that John Mess lyrics were A plus on this one. Yep. Uh, the like metal type intro that they like go back to was really cool. Anytime they're doing something different, it's it's good. Like this song has a bit of different instrumentals with a little bit familiarity, but the the structure of John and Tillian is a little bit different. There's like two John parts in a row, two Tillian parts in a row, which like I think that's why I liked Instant Gratification over the last two records they put out because even though it had a very similar sound um, to the, all their stuff recently, that album had a lot of n not a lot of forgiveness for not putting either of them enough on a track. Like there are a lot of songs that don't have John that much on them, and there are a few songs where John has a lot of stuff and Tillian doesn't. And I think what's more important than evening them out is just whatever fits the part more, and them always going back and forth does get boring after a while. Uh, and this song, I think it flowed really well. I think this is the first song that's been under three minutes. Their songs are usually pushing four, and like not that there's anything wrong with that, but like when every song is like four minute song, four minute song, four minute song, like it's nice to have these shorter tracks to break them up, and Three minutes isn't really even that short of a track, but when every song is a minute longer, it felt a hell of a lot shorter. I mean, the album's ten Fifth. minutes shy of an hour. All right, track 11. Say hi. Say hi. 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 I'm Dave. I'm Jim. This is Dave and Jim React. Review. Say hi. Af Afterburner. Dance, Kevin, dance. Tw All right. Say hi. Say hi. Probably the best song on the album so far. Yeah, this last half of this album has been very good. Uh, this has probably been the heaviest song so far, which, like, hate to be like, I like it because it's heavy, but it just set, sets it apart on this album and opens up with, like, some blast beats. And even Tillian's parts are actually They're good. They're actually pretty decent. Uh, what, I've, what I've realized that I like in the dynamic is, like, I don't mind Tillian not saying much. His job is to pretty much like make noises, make some melody in between John's parts, but he doesn't need to say that much. Like, I he's pretty much repeating the same line in his little like refrain part. The do you notice I'm normal, which is like most of everything he has to say in the song, other than one little verse in the beginning. Um, so he's a lot more to flavor in this song, which is all you need. And the uh, John's lyrics are all really good. Yeah. They seem like some personal shit. Yeah, whenever... John usually has one or so songs on each album that actually seem a little, like... This whole part emotional. sounds like anxiety. Yeah. How do I say hi to another guy when I want to die? The, the breakdown is really cool. It's kind of, like, broken up, and John's, like muttering a uh, high in a lot of the parts and it's all you know in this typical like six eight groove breakdown da -da 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 -na -na, da -da 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 -na. it's cool this is a good song i also want to point out that he uses the word enslaved which could also mean prisoner i don't know if there's a theme going on here there's or definitely a theme going on why is the album called afterburner the theme i don't know is that john is enslaving Tillian and making him sing. And that's why all Tillian's lyrics are terrible. Not all of them. Just, Just most. most of them. Dude, there better be another fucking Will Swan. Oh, that, I've verse. heard there's a trap part on one of these last songs. So it's on. Is so. that the one with Bill Murray? Yeah, probably. Okay. Nothing Shameful featuring Andrew Wells of Idola fame. I thought this one was okay. Kind of, like, broke the stride of, like, the different songs. But I think this is a song that would grow on me after a few more listens. Like, I think, think it'd get better. The feature is definitely the best part of it. Like, Andrew Wells' lyrics on this, like, he 
pretty obviously wrote his own part. I'd be really surprised if he didn't, because lyrics on yeah. this part seem so much more heartfelt than any of the other lyrics that Tillium would have written, and not silly enough to be John's lyrics. And also, not that Tillian's a bad singer at all, but to hear someone else on this who also is a great singer and not, you know, really high singer. I mean, he can, but he's not going that high. This song is like the equivalent of shelf life to me, where the feature just makes the whole song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, is a, this was a good one, I and, think. Yeah. I think it'd grow, but overall right now it's just, it's a, it, it was a decent song. I was pretty bored until the Andrew Wells part, but the rest of the song is pretty good. The outro was cool. Cool. They Tillian and John sound really good on top of each other, like layering. But mm-hmm. Yeah. That song was okay at best. Time for the last song in the album. And it's time to ride this into, into the, the sunset. sunset. Featuring Bill Murray, a.k.a. Johnny Frank from Attack Attack. John, wait. Featuring, wait, into the, in into the sunset, featuring Bill Murray. Wait, isn't that guy, it in uh isn't wasn't that guy attack, a, a, he's a wasn't that guy an attack attack. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so last song in the album, into the sunset. It was a it was a good one. It was a slow kind of valve mender. I thought the feature was cool. Um, <laughs> you didn't like it. The song seems to actually have a general theme, which is the world ending. The world's kind of going to shit, and uh, Will Swan definitely doesn't care. Will Swan Bro, comes in with his rap Will verse. Will Swan comes in, drops the N word, and leaves. He's getting That's, worse at rapping. There's no okay. way. So at least back when he rapped, you thought that wasn't on, fire on the old albums. He had some sort of like charisma, like fucking evil verse crow. You. Yeah, like he would, like he sounds bored as fuck doing this. So the world is ending, he, he, and Tillian's in jail. He's a prisoner. The world's ending. And Will Swan is just rapping, but he's not showing any emotion. And that's how you can tell he doesn't care that the world is ending because he's not showing any bit of emotion in this. So you think the bull is the warden? Yeah. Of the jail. Yeah. And the world's ending. You can obviously see there's pandemonium going on in this album art. Like the world's ending. There's a lot of fire. Maybe it's a metaphorical prison. Wow so deep let's let's get this right this song kind of felt like a closer i had the same problem i had with the first song it doesn't feel like a dance gavin dance closer like all their closing songs are usually pretty good yeah this song was just kind of i feel like this could have been in the middle of the album and been just as strong of a song I feel like they could have put something better at the end. Honestly, this whole album could probably be cut down by, like, three songs. Yeah. Like, a solid ten-track record would have been just fine. Okay, if you got rid of Prisoner... Right? And... Not and a strong Cal- Calentamiento. Calentamiento. And, and then... Maybe this one. Honestly, I could have... Or Strawberry's Wake. Strawberry's, Strawberry's Wake, Wake kind of boring. Strawberry's Parallels was good. Okay. Night's nice eight through Eight through 11 were all great songs. Okay. Um, But yeah, okay. So, Into the Sunset was an okay song. Best part is John Mess saying, you're a clown now, you're a clown now. I agree. Yeah. So... John Mess takes the cake every time. Okay. So, let's do a... Full review. Our fi- final thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So, final thoughts. Uh, top three songs? Top three songs. We're definitely gonna go with Say Hi, Probably Born to Fail, and maybe Parody Catharsis. I'd say Say Hi, Night Sway, and Three Wishes. Multiple stab wounds, yeah! That pretty much sums up the album, I think, in a way. Yeah, I mean, this album wasn't... It was, like, half good, yeah. half past. Like we were saying, if you trimmed a lot of the fat off this album, I think it would have been 
a lot better, but with everything on it, first half of the album kind of dragged. It's 50 drugged. fucking minutes. So it's a really long album um, from Dance Gavin Dance, a band that doesn't change stuff up a lot. But the songs they are changing stuff up on are really good. And yeah, tracks I'd revisit in the future. Three Wishes I'd leave on for a good chuckle at the multiple stab wounds. If I was, I'd put this in the, on in the car so me and Dave could scream multiple stab wounds together. And then Born to Fail, Parallels, Night Sway, Say Hi. Those songs all in the row. I could probably honestly listen to 8 through 13 all yeah. the way through, no problem. That's seven songs. I mean, that's yeah, six that's songs like, right that's there. That's half the album. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And like... I think the saddest thing about this is that the first half of the album is summed up by multiple stab wounds. Just that one line. Not, like, Parody of the Tharsis is great, too. But, like... Lyrics Lie is okay. Lyrics Lie had a cool intro, um, but, like... Those few moments don't really save the first half of the album. If they would have even... Not even just taken songs off of this album, but put... If they would have rearranged the, the track list, yeah. it would have been... This would have been a better listen. Um, I'd like to see one of those fan things where they remake the track list to something cooler. Because I think it could be done probably pretty easy. That's, that's our next video. So, overall. I'd say my score... I'm going to say... I'm going to say a... A 6.5... I'm going to give it a solid 6 since there's... There's six good songs on it, and yeah. then the multiple stab wounds part, give it a point five. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yep. Yeah, this album was okay. Dance Gavin Dance Afterburner. Album of the year? Honestly, I think they fucked up by stopping getting new vocalists every other album. They've gotten, they've gotten pretty stale and content with their style, and I think that has been what's turned me off from them in the last few years every every album they were putting out before that was fresh and changed it up but they did two albums with Tillian and ever since then it's been getting it's been getting old and that's why I'll probably never just turn on a whole album of theirs and listen to it all the way through unless they released a new one but if their songs come up on like a daily mix or something I'll listen to it 50% of the time I'm gonna stick to Secret Band. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why. Uh, Say Hi was cool. Or Parallels. Chat. Say Hi. The real everyone. It was basically a Secret Band song. All right. This is Dave. This is Jim. Yeah, and we're leaving. Mm -hmm.